Hi, please state your name and position. Hi, I'm Michael Teddy, and I'm a doctoral researcher here at the Machine Perception and Cognitive Robotics Lab. And what projects are you currently working on? I'm working on many things, but one of the main projects I'm working on right now is the uh, MPCR rover. So it's basically basically um, getting a little robot to drive itself using like recent deep learning advancements. And I'm also working on a bird project where we have cameras set up in the Everglades and we want a computer to recognize birds. And uh, what would the practical use of the bird project be? Well, there's like, many uses. Um, one of the main uses is for like scientists. I'm um, actually working with another lab. They, they just want to count the birds and they don't want to have to look through millions of photos. So they asked me to um, create like a neural network to do this on automatically. Um, but so, so you're writing code to pick up on, basically identify any birds in a picture shown? Yes. So we'll click, uh, so we have people clicking on birds, and then the, eventually if the, bird, if the computer sees enough of them, it'll be like, start to realize what a bird is. So that, you know, this is very important for, um, having grown up in Florida, um, I'd like to, you know, keep the sanctity of the Everglades, <laughs> if that makes sense. And it's just very important to me. And that, besides that, the state actually pays a lot of people to do this every year. And, like millions of dollars goes into these, just this bird one bird species alone. So, so it would help lower costs of wildlife tracking. Yeah, it can help get like better results for scientists because, I mean, we, me and Will talk about it all the time. We call it like digital ecology, where you could have like millions of cameras just throughout the forest, like looking at things. You can learn a lot more about it. And it's primarily based on the coding of it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just, I mean, since technology has gotten a lot cheaper in recent years. And these new, like, deep learning developments have also come across. Uh, just combining those two with, like, low-cost cameras and then, you know, deep learning and neural networks, we can really, you know, learn much more about the natural world than ever before. And have you encountered any difficulties in this? Uh, well, this well, the particular bird project I'm working on, the images are very large. They're, like, um, it's like 2,500 by, like, 1500 pixels, so it's you know, over 3 million pixels, I think. And the birds, some, you know, we're looking at a hole, like a field, and so the birds sometimes, if it's far away, it appears like a little blob. And you, you know, a, a person probably couldn't even see it. I couldn't see it the first two hours I was looking at it. Uh, so let's go to the rover project. Um, can you tell me a, bit, a little bit about that? Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm uh, mainly doing now. Um, basically, we have these little Brookstone rovers. Um, so we, we have these little commercial robots that we bought from Brookstone. You're supposed to control it with an app on your phone, but we were, we were able to hack into it and have the video from the rover's camera go into the computer over the Wi-Fi, and then through the computer we have the brain that tells it how to drive based on what it's seeing, and then it sends the command back through the Wi-Fi to the robot. How does it learn to drive itself? So we're doing like all sorts of different like deep learning neural networks and um, like all all sorts of recent advancements in, in like um, math that have been, that have enabled us to do this. So one of the things is um, we use neural networks with have that, that are like have auto differentiation. So basically, um, we write a computer program that takes the data in and do some operations on it, and then we the output of that program will give you a steering wheel angle. So auto differentiation allows you to get the gradient of that program of all the of all the um, the uh, what are they called? All the operations you've done, you can get the gradient of that and find out how you could do it better the next time. So you do that a bunch of times and it eventually learns. It's the same thing with the birds. It's just we're giving it different data. They were giving it pictures of birds, here we're giving it pictures of a road. It's the same essentially the same type of brain. So before you have it drive itself, you control it so that yeah, it this, sees what it's supposed to do? So there's different types of learning that, that can you can do. So this is called supervised learning. So it's supervised by a person essentially where we have a person drive it around for you know a few hours. And so for every, every, every frame it takes in, it knows what the person was doing at that time. So it just, we have it like review that, like 
the frame and the, the appropriate action at that time. And then we have it, it'll eventually learn how, like, kind of how the human drives. So that's called supervised learning. Okay. Um, the coding for that must be extremely extensive. Not as much as you'd think, not as much as um, traditional algorithms and things like that. So the, the actual like brain of it is actually like you know like this, the, just like about that. Most of the operations is like getting it the data in the right format, collecting the data and stuff like that. Okay, and is this project difficult at times? Sometimes you feel like you want to pull your hair out. Yes, <laughs> uh, I wanted to feel like that uh, like an hour ago when I was working on <laughs> working on this new network called DenseNet that just came out. So, what are some of the difficulties that you run into with this kind of project? Uh, well, probably the main thing is since so most people that are in like doing computer vision nowadays, they don't really they're not, they're never really testing in like a real world environment. They just you know take in some images that are like already on the computer, and they train on that and they test on like some images that you know the same ones. They never test in like the real world. Most people. So the whole, you know, it's been a hard, it's been hard to like define a protocol to go from, you know, getting these images into the brain and then transferring that to the real world and then like test it and compare models, you know, um, objectively from that. That's been the main problem. Okay. You um, talked a bit about neural networks before. What, can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. So neural networks... It's you know pretty broad area. They've been around for a while, you know, since even probably before the '80s. But uh, basically, it's a uh, they take in some amount of data. So here, for our robot or the bird, it takes in these pixels. Each pixel has like a certain value, and it's gonna say it's gonna look at those pixels, and it's gonna find correlations between them, and it's going to send it, you know, keep doing that, find correlations between the outputs of the previous layer and the outputs, and you just keep going through each layer. Eventually, it says, okay, you know, is there a bird in the photo or is there not a bird in the photo, or should I turn left, right, or straight, or something. And neural networks are mainly used for, in the supervised context, like I was talking about. So it'll give you some output, like what it thinks it is, and based on that, you'll say, okay, you were right or wrong, and then how wrong were you? And so correct yourself based on that. And you'll you know, do that a couple times or you know, a few thousand times. Okay. And eventually it will get better. Okay, thank you very much.